Coming up on today's video, I head out on a photography tour of the bizarre post-apocalyptic landscape of Dungeness on the south coast of England. Let's start by having a look at some of the shots we're going to get. Good morning from the rather chilly south coast um, of Dungeness. It's taken me uh, a little bit over two hours to get here from London because early morning traffic wasn't great, but I've arrived to this beautiful light. It is absolutely gorgeous here. Now I intended to stop and have a little break and have a coffee when I arrived, but honestly, when the lights like this, I just couldn't help myself in coming out and shooting. The Dungeness is an interesting place. There's so much to see here, so much to photograph. Um, nothing more so, of course, than this lighthouse, which is uh, appearing behind me. So that's the first thing I want to do because the light is looking great on it. Um, obviously, I need to make sure I get my angles on this just right because behind it, just there, is the nuclear power station. And I don't think they'll take too kindly to me poking a lens too close to what they're up to. It is very chilly here. It's about minus three, actually, which um, means the ground is frozen. There's some beautiful frost. Whether I can use that in any photos, I don't know. But it is definitely gloves on weather. Although when I'm doing this, I need to be able to poke the screen. So it is currently gloves off. Give me very cold fingers. So I have been here before, so I do know some of the areas that I want to go, but last time I was here, the weather was very different, the time of year was very different. I was shooting on a very, very different camera. So I am looking for different things here today, and I want to make sure that I use my time well. I only have the one day. It is a bit of a trek to get out here from London, so I do want to make sure that I'm maximizing all my opportunities to get some great shots. So at first glance, it might seem that Dungeness is kind of bleak. In fact, it's, I believe it's Britain's only actual desert, but it's really not when you look closer. It's dotted with old fishing boats and these broken down huts. There's driftwood, there's fishing nets. There are so many little interesting things to find along here and they all lend themselves so well to photographs. I think this really is a photographer's dream. Last time I came here, I was shooting in black and white, and it is an area that really does lend itself so well to black and white photography. There are endless textures and it's full of contrast. So it is an interesting place to ignore color. And here's one of my favorite black and white images from this shoot. I really like the leading lines of the rail tracks snaking their way into the distance, and I love all of the different textures from the wood on the boat, the ropes in the foreground, and those moody clouds in the sky. It's all those details that are really brought to life so much more in black and white. But there is a lot of color here as well, and particularly on a day like this when the sky is full of these gorgeous pastel tones, um, I think I could be in for some really good shots today. So I'm here quite early morning, so there's a lot of that soft dawn light here, and I want to make the most of that, because as I start to shoot, then the sun's going to rise, and as it gets to midday, that light's going to get really harsh. So I'll probably end up having a nice lunch break, maybe drive up the coast, find somewhere that does a good coffee. Then I can start again after lunch and shoot on towards the sunset when the light gets nice and low, and you get those long shadows, which I think in this sort of area, it's going to look really cool. Now the first thing that I want to get is this big wooden T thing. I'll be honest, I actually have no idea what this is. In fact, I have no idea what a lot of the stuff around here is. <laughs> I'm sure it served a purpose at one point. Maybe it still does. 
Um, but I had an idea of getting this tea and I really wanted to use a very long exposure to try and get some of the clouds streaking overhead. Um, I think it could be a really dramatic shot. It's obviously a very dramatic looking piece of architecture with that. It's a big piece of something. I think that could look really cool. The problem is, is that in this morning, as you might be able to see, the sky is a little bit flat. Um, there is some texture to the clouds, but it doesn't really lend itself well to um, a long exposure with lots of uh, sort of streaking movement going on. But this is the shot I'm going for at the moment. Um, I've got my 10 stop ND filter on there, and I've also got my graduated ND just to slightly darken that sky a little bit. I'm using bulb exposure, and I've got it on F22, which is the maximum aperture for this lens. I'm using my remote release to do an exposure of about 100 seconds, which is uh, the longest I can do and still actually have it not being overexposed. Um, you can't really see the shot too well, but that's what we're going for at the moment. With a long exposure, this scene certainly looks rather dramatic, but I also like this shot done with a faster shutter speed to keep some of that cloud texture. Maybe you can let me know in the comments which you prefer. Already looking forward to going back to the car and having some of the coffee I brought. It's got cold hands. I really wish I'd brought some sweets with me. God, I love sweets. Sweets are brilliant. I think I've probably got a few shots I'm quite pleased with actually from the early morning light. But as the morning is getting on, the sky is getting really quite flat and gray. You can see here in the distance, there's not a lot going on there. Um, and it isn't really what I've got in mind. So I'm heading back to the car. I'm gonna recharge with a coffee, maybe have a sip for 20 minutes, half an hour, see what the sky does. This composition really stood out to me as I love the way these banks of pebbles softly undulate, catching the light and creating these flowing patterns. And here it was this boat's mooring shade that I really wanted to use as a leading line, drawing the eye up the scene towards the boat itself, looking all dramatic and imposing, standing on the pebbles. so much better. So I gave myself a bit of a break and I drove up the coast to find a shop. Bought some mini eggs, bought some other sweets, a little bit of a sugar boost for the morning, never hurts. I'm back at the main uh, Dungeness site though that I want to shoot and rather than going back up, I dropped my camera. Rather than going back up behind me to where I was before with the big T thing, I'm going the other way, down where there is a lot more boats, a lot more huts, a lot more things to see. There are so many little bits. Uh, really looking forward to exploring. Really looking forward to showing you around. It really is just fascinating everywhere. Like you look here and we've got all this going on here in the foreground, we've got these broken old rowboats in the distance. And as you move around, just even more. Everywhere you look, there is an interesting object to put into a scene. I'm really keen on this scene that I just found because I can get two of the boats in and they both look in really nice positions. I'm shooting it at F16, so hopefully both of them should be nice and sharp. I've got the uh, graduated neutral density filter just to help bring down some of the brightness of that sky, which is quite overpoweringly bright against the shadowy boats. In Photoshop, I had some work to do in cleaning up all of the raindrops that had made their way onto my filter. Once clean, I did some dodging and burning to add some contrast to the scene and made various other adjustments to colour and exposure, and I'm actually quite happy with the finished result. Sure, this shot could have looked more dramatic with a moody sky overhead, but I actually rather like the minimalism here, and the lucky timing in capturing the birds in the sky has helped add just a touch more interest in the upper half of the scene. Just gonna cheer myself up with some mini eggs. Love mini eggs. The sky remained grey and featureless, but eventually I found an absolute treasure trove of broken boats and metalwork, and I knew there was a good composition to be had somewhere. 
So I really like this scene that I've got set up here. I love having these chains in the foreground and then the boat in the background. But the problem with this scene is that even if I focus on the boat, the chains aren't going to be in focus. And similarly, if I focus on the chains, the boat won't be in focus. The only way I can get a shot with everything in focus is by focus stacking. That means taking different photos with different focus points and then combining them in post to make sure that everything is nice and sharp. So let's take a look at how we would piece this photo together in Photoshop. Now first of all we can see the files in Lightroom and you'll see in particular that what I've done is I've bookended the series with a photo of my hand. That does make things much easier for you in post as you can very clearly see exactly where that series of images should be. So what you do is you would select them all just like this and you would click edit in and then open as layers in Photoshop. So here we are over in Photoshop and as you can see all those different images have been opened as layers one on top of the other over here. Now the first thing to do is make sure that they are all selected and you would go to edit and auto align the layers. Now what that does is just make sure that everything is neatly lined up. There is a chance that while you were taking your photos, maybe your hand moved the camera slightly, maybe a tiny little bit of wind may have moved things out of line. Hopefully using that tool brings everything in line again. Now once that's done, you go back into edit and you go auto blend layers. Make sure that stack images is checked rather than panorama and then go ahead and click OK. And so here we can take a look at the final image and if we zoom in a bit we can see that the boat is nice and sharp as are these chains in the foreground. In fact every part of this front to back is pin sharp and that is just what we need. So taking it back into Lightroom now and again we can zoom in see that it's all nice and sharp. What that's given me though is my base image. There's no other editing that's gone into this shot. So now all I need to do is make sure that it fits the moody look of the rest of my shots. Now actually I don't think this image needs a whole lot of work. I know that I want to bring these shadows up a little bit because some of the detail on these chains is getting lost just a little bit. But the highlights are balanced really nicely. I may just boost the whites a bit just to give it a little bit more punch. And I'm going to bring down the saturation by probably quite a lot, maybe by minus 30, but then I'm going to bring up the vibrance by almost the same amount. Now. Now I don't really know, if I'm honest, exactly how these two sliders work, but I have found that if you bring one down by an amount and the other one up by the same amount, you can get some quite dramatic looks. It's certainly a look that I think works really well for this scene. Now I'm going to go to the Hue Saturation Luminance tab and I'm going to go onto Hue and I'm going to bring those yellows down just a little more into the orange, matching, if we bring it up and down, you can see it matches a little bit more the orange pebbles around on that scene. So I'm going to bring that down there. The orange I'm not going to touch all that much. If you bring that down too far, everything goes very pink. We don't like that. And it goes a sickly green the other way. So I'm going to leave that pretty much in the middle, maybe just a little bit under. But I'm going to go into the saturation. And I'm going to take out a little bit of that orange. I'm also going to bring out some of the blue. If we flick back and forth, we can see what we've done. And already I quite like this, but there's a little bit more that I want to do. First of all, I want to use a radial filter. I want a little bit more exposure. And I'm going to put this long and thin over on these chains. I'm going to turn it slightly and bring it down further still, just like this. Now this is just going to add a little bit more punch onto those chains. I'm going to boost that clarity, really make them pop out. Now, I don't want this to be affecting the sky at all. If we turn this on and off, we can see that it is casting a bit of a halo on that sky. But there is a new tool in Lightroom called Range Mask. It's right here. Now, if we click Luminance and Show Luminance Mask, we can see where this uh, filter is being applied. But we can tell it that we don't want it to apply in the highlights. So as soon as I start to bring that down, you can see that already it's no longer applying the mask to the sky, which is exactly what we want. And because we can see where the mask is being applied like this, we can probably move it around a little bit like this, maybe even widen it slightly. So it's applying to more of the chains. And we uncheck that box, go off this, and there we go. 
Now I'm going to do the same thing again and just add a little bit more pop to the boat back here. So I'm going to put my radial mask about here. I'm going to spin it a little bit so it fits the shape of the boat. So I'm going to bring those highlights up. I'm even going to bring those shadows down a little bit. And again, I'm going to go to the range mask. I'm going to go show luminance mask. I want to know exactly where this mask is being applied. And actually, it isn't accidentally applying to the sky or the ground. It's very much focused just on the middle of the boat, which is exactly what I want. So that's great. If we take a look at the image now, we can see that it's looking very, very moody, very dramatic. It's looking very, very industrial. with Those big iron chains and the old wood and the railway tracks going through the middle. I think it's a really cracking area. Again, when we look at that final image, we can see the chains are nice and sharp and the boat is nice and sharp as well. Overall, I'm really pleased with how this image has come out. I think it's dramatic, it's moody, it's everything I wanted from the area. So I've come back to the car to, uh, well, mostly to shelter from the rain. Um, it is coming down a little bit harder now. It's making things a little bit difficult because obviously my lenses are getting wet and I'm having to clean them off all the time. Um, also, the conditions are just very bleak and grey and miserable, which, yeah, it suits this area, but I'm just, I'm struggling to find exactly the right compositions I want. So I thought, let's have a break. I'll warm up, warm my hands. Cleverly, I made myself some soup. So um, I'm going to have some soup. This will be my lunch break. Mmm. Leek and potato. It's good. Still warm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I also bought something called chicken on a stick. Now, I don't really have high hopes for this. Quite rubbery chicken. Mm. I have been sitting in the car for quite some time now. I've watched various YouTube videos, I listen to various podcasts, and I've had a bit more soup. The rain has still kept coming down, but on the horizon, it is brightening. It's not doing a lot. It's not changing to any huge extent. I don't think I'm going to suddenly have this lovely eruption of sunset colour, but it is brightening up a little bit. I'm hoping that that is going to give me a little bit more to go on um, in some of these shots. So I think probably in 20 minutes, maybe half an hour, I'm going to head back out. I want to go to some of the same locations I went to before, because I really just think that with a better sky, even just something in the air, I don't need big billowing clouds, I don't need amazing colours, I just need something that isn't just a blank space. Um, I think that is going to make a lot of difference for, for some of these shots, um, so I'm going to head back out, see what I can get, um, but for now, I may as well just stay in where it's warm. I've done it, I've bit the bullet, I've come back out. It is brighter. Is it bright enough? We'll have to see. The sky is back to being a big blob of grey. There is a little texture in there that I might be able to pull out afterwards. But for the most part, I think the light has gone. It's also now getting on for about half past four. And as it's the middle of winter, we're pretty much getting to the point where the sun is going. Um, I don't really think I'm going to get a lot more out of this. I'm going to hang around just in case there is this last minute little bit of sunlight that pokes its head through or in case the light takes on a different quality that I want to try and get. Um, but I'm going to walk a little further along, see if there's um, a better spot for low light um, photography than where I am at the moment. Generally though, I am really pleased with what I've got, so I don't think the weather has been a problem. I think I could have got more interesting shots on a better day, but I'm by no means disappointed with what I have got. This one might be one of my last shots of the day. The light is really fading now. But I've come back to the big T and I've got my 10 stop ND filter on and I'm really hoping to do some very long exposures in order to get some motion of the clouds going overhead. It doesn't look like they're moving at all but the exposure I'm doing is about four minutes so hopefully there may be a little bit of movement over that length of time. 
here's the shot I'm going for. The road going away in the left thirds, the big T in the right thirds. Could be quite cool. Got my wide angle lens on to give a big wide view. And as I said, I've got my 10 stop ND on there. And also I've got the graduated ND in order to bring down some of the highlights in the sky. I've got a programmable timer for this. So all I do is set it at four minutes, press the button and wait for it to do its thing. But when I'm trying to do several of these and I'm changing angles and experimenting a bit, doing lots and lots of four minutes does add up to a lot of standing around and doing very little. I'm sort of walking in circles to keep the blood moving to my legs. It's still damn cold, all the water is frozen. It's definitely still sub-zero out here. It's only going to get colder now the sun's gone. Not that the sun ever really came out today, but... Yeah. I should have brought a book. Or at least a magazine. Ooh! I just heard my camera finish. Let's go and take a look. And here it is, and as I suspected, using that super long exposure has just turned what little texture there was in the sky into a big grey mass. Using a faster shutter speed did let me keep in that cloud detail, and I think this shot is much better as a result. So there we go. I'll be honest, it is disappointing when you end a shoot like that on some images that don't really do a lot for you. Those final ones with the big T, doing that long exposure really didn't add anything to the scene at all. In fact, if anything, we lost a lot of that texture in the sky. But I did really enjoy this shoot. It's so great exploring that landscape and I'm really happy with a lot of the shots that I actually have come away with. Now, I did find it interesting that although I was shooting in colour and black and white, I did find that a lot of my shots did lend themselves better to a black and white conversion. There's so much texture and detail and contrast in Dungeness that black and white lends itself incredibly well. Now, as an area in itself, it is easy to get to, but do bear in mind that this is private land and people do actually live in the area. So if you do go and shoot there, try not to go pointing your lenses too close to anybody's actual homes give people a bit of privacy. But please do let me know what you think of all the images you've seen. You can leave your comments in the box below and while you're at it, please do make sure to like and why not subscribe as well. And hey, if you're feeling particularly generous, maybe even go out and tell a few of your friends about this video. It'd be great to get the word out a little bit more, but I will see you next time.